Hi and welcome to um, Map Projections where we're going to have a look at some of the fundamentals of Map Projections. How to work with the equations that make up Map Projections. So, Map Projections. Everything that's done in here you can find in your notes on ClickUp. Map Projections 1 is the title and they actually look like this. Uh, once you get there, you can see what they look like. That's them. So, and that's the notes on ClickUp. Okay, the purpose of a map projection transformations is to represent the grata Q, lambda and phi, remember, in terms of grid coordinates x and y. So x, y, both x and y, will be functions of lambda and phi, or of polar coordinates, but we don't work much with polar coordinates at the moment. So, one thing you need to remember very, very clearly is the lines of points of zero distortion, what do we call them? We call them principal points and lines. That's where the, either the sphere of the cylinder or the plane or the cone touches the sphere. Over there you'll have zero distortion. And those are the principal lines and points. So you need to remember that. You need to remember this definition. Now, scale and scale factor, the concepts there, uh, as I explained, we normally take the globe, the Earth itself, and first we make it smaller to a scale we actually want to use, and then we project it onto a map. And there, where the cylinder touches, or the cone touches, or the plane touches, that's where you'll have your principal scale. That's the scale which is the same as the scale of this little globe. And normally it's given as a representative fraction. It's the globe distance divided by the Earth distance. So it's this distance divided by that distance. And there's an example. You can get 1 meter is 1,500,000 meters. You can see how that's derived. So that's the map scale. The representative fraction is then 1 to 1,500,000. And you can see away from that principal line, things are not uh, true to scale anymore. And that's the concept of scale factor. You, the state of scale is correctly, correct only at the standard points. That's what you must remember. The principal points and the principal lines. And then the relation between the scale factor, uh, between the scale in any other place and the principal scale is called the scale factor. And there's a way to calculate it in the, in the notes. And a scale factor of 1.25 means that actual scale is one and a quarter times the principal scale. And obviously a scale of 0.75 will mean that the true scale or the actual scale at that point is now <laughs> three quarter times the principal scale. Okay, and then we define some scales. We define a scale factor which relates to the scale along the parallel The scale along the parallel, which is K, it's not H, remember, and then we have a scale uh, along the meridian. Which you need to remember is the vertical scale. When I say K is for horizontal, but it's not an H, 
the H is actually for the vert uh, for the vertical scale. Problem transformations, those uh, the following expressions are cal calculated. We call them fundamental Gaussian quantities or FGO or FGQs. Fundamental Gaussian quantities. And they used to simplify some of the equations. It's quite a long derivation. You can have a look at it in uh, the notes you've got that uh, Map Projections 1. But the fundamental quantities are E, F, G, and J. And they, each of them got a derivatives as the functions. So you can, once you've derived, or once you've uh, differentiated the generating equations of a projection, you can calculate these E, F, and G with respect to phi and lambda, of course. Good. And then from those, you can calculate H, remember, the scale along the meridian, not the horizontal one, and K, the scale along the parallel, by using the square root of the fundamental Gaussian uh, quantity E, and K is the square root of uh, FGOG divided by cos phi, and you can see uh, both of these, the uh, scale factor along the meridian has got everything to do with the along the meridian has got everything to do with the parallels and if you look at K it's relying on the latitude but it's got everything to do with the longitude And also some scale factors, uh, u or mu, along any line that is a bearing alpha with a meridian. Now, that we'll have a look at again in Tissot's Indicatrix, or in terms of the bearing alpha, you can also derive mu. Now, in Tissot's Indicatrix, is simply a picture of what happens to a circle on the globe when you actually project it on your map. Now normally we take a unit circle, it could be any unit, and we project that onto the map and you can calculate the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis of the ellipse which is that circle is going to be distorted into. And you can also calculate uh, theta prime which is the angle between the meridian and the parallel and beta prime which is the angle between the meridian and the semi-major axis of the ellipse and you can calculate A and B obviously which is the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis so it tells you how this thing is distorted and that angle mu, remember uh, how your distances get distorted as you traverse along the uh, ellipse over there, you can see the distance, the scale factor for the distance becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it becomes larger again. So that is where this previous scale factor, this me, comes from. Angular distortion is also true because the ellipse will not have the same angles as the circle. That's an indication of how your angles are distorted and you can calculate that as well by sine omega over 2 is these values. And you can also calculate the length distortion by means of this value uh, where u is the angle from the semi-major axis in, of this is indicatrix, in other words uh, you've got the semi-major axis over here, and U is that angle. Don't worry too much about that one. And that's it for this uh, lecture. The next lecture, we will have a look at how to calculate this as indicatrix and how to draw it. See you then.